Hey everybody, Charles here. I'd like to do a second video now, continuing on our work that we did in the first video. We have our Lady Rain and Mr. Mark already here. This is where we ended up in the last video. And if you drag the playhead here, we can see that the shapes are being transferred properly. Mark's talking, Rain is talking, everything looks great. What we'd like to do now is take the animation from this audio clip and move it into Blender. I've written some new parts to the add-on to help us do that. But we're going to start in the audio to face application because we need to do a little bit of setup first. So I'm going to come back to my folder where I have my little project file. So you know this file here is the one that we have open. It just has rain, mark, and the other head. Now I don't need this head, so I'm just going to hide it. And what we're going to do is we're going to drag in the USD scale shapes file that we exported. So this is the same file that you bring into Blender to apply the shapes to your rig. I'm going to take this here, this this the USD scale one, not the shapes one. And we're going to drag it into the outliner to reference that file. If you're unfamiliar with USD referencing, this makes a link to the other file, but does not import the data into this one, so saves won't be impacted. Now, as I bring that character in, we're going to find that she is rotated off a little bit. This is okay, this is expected. And it has to do with the way Blender has its up vectors and things like that. But what we're going to do is just for, for visual aid sake, I'm going to come over here and we're going to go add, transform up, rotate, scale, and translate. And then we can just rotate this back 90 degrees. That'll put her in the rough position to match the original head. And if I bring her over, I'm actually not sure how much. Let's see. It's like 0.7 then that will align her sort of in the same position that the open mouth mark was, but on the other side. She's not connected. So the next thing we have to do is we have to connect her up. And what we're doing is we're taking, so this, this head drives this head, but these are not shapes. This is sort of a point driving. Then we're going to use these shapes to figure out which actual shapes on this head should be driven. And that's done with the blend shape connector. We're going to come over to A2F data conversion. And under the blend shape conversion section, we're going to have to select our input mesh. Uh, you're going to have to scroll through and find the rain, so the transfer character rain result over here. Okay? That's not the mark one. You have to make sure it's not that. You're looking for the result character, this one here. All right? And then for our final mesh, we're going to pick our neutral face over here from our reference. I'm going to hit Setup Blend Shape Solve. In other videos you may have seen, at this point, everything should be working. But with our Blender characters, that might not be the case because of scaling. So I'm going to come back to this Blend Shape Solve node. I'm going to click it. And you're going to see down here we have the inputs. We have all of these values here. I don't have good enough math to explain to you what they mean. But I've been told by people who do that all these values are too big for this character. The big trick here is to take this value and set it to 0 0.0001. Uh, sorry, maybe that's too many zeros. Two zeros and a one. I'm going to copy that and just paste it into these other value spots. And as I do this, you're going to start seeing the face change. Now when I drag the audio, you'll see that the face is following along. So please remember, that's what you have to do to make the Blender heads work. Uh, you have to set these numbers much smaller. That said, these are the numbers for rain in the current size that she is from the Blender scene. If you are rigging your characters larger, these numbers might not be correct, and you sort of just have to play around with it until you find a set of numbers that work. Starting from the same number in all of the values is not a bad way to go, uh, and we are looking into ways to you know, have slightly more easy defaults for these. But now that this is all attached in the data conversion section, we're good to go. What I'm going to do is I'm going to, I have this cache folder here under my project, and I'm going to export this as rain wizard zero one. I'm using the, the wizard, the, the typical wizard uh, audio clip that comes with audio to face. So we're gonna call this rain wizard zero one. I'm gonna leave the playback frame rate at 60. If you're exporting for TV, you might set it to 24. For games, 30. I'm going to leave it at 60 to demonstrate some things. Now, over here, we have two formats. 
that we are able to export for Blender right now. You can export as JSON or you can export as USD ASCII. Currently, the USD binary format is not supported. We hope to support it in the future. But for right now, you have to pick one of those two formats. I'm going to pick USD ASCII to start and I'm going to hit export weights. I've already picked my folder here as the cache folder and that's the name. So when I hit export weights, it should ask me to save this file and it'll go into the cache folder. Only it didn't because I have no solver selected. This trips me up every time. Make sure you pick the solver in this little list here and then hit export weights. You can see the file name that we're going to be exporting to. If we hit it, it will step through the frames. It will figure out all of the weight values for the shapes on this head and it will save those out to the USDA file. The base hue on the waters of Funny the thing, on, if you had looping on, <laughs> it will continue playing. So make sure you turn your looping off if you're doing a bunch of exports. I'm also going to come back here and go to JSON and hit export weights again. Same deal. There's nothing special about what's happening here. That's just a different format. We have both of our files in the content browser here, which means that we are ready to head over to Blender. So I will see you there in a second. Here we are back in Blender. This is the same scene we ended off the last video with. So if you are a little confused, uh, please go back and watch the first video where we set everything up, made our project, exported and got the shapes back in. So this, this mesh here already has all of the shapes on it. That's important. Also, all of the shape names are the same as they were uh, before and in audio to face without the names being the same. This will not work. And what I've done is I'm going to come over here, go into our cache folder and load up the rain wizard JSON file just to show you. If you load up the JSON, we are going to have a source frame rate slider here. Unfortunately, right now, the JSON file that gets exported does not have a, a frame rate value inside of it. So if you export it at 60 from audio to face, you're going to have to set 60 here. If you export it at 24, you're going to have to set 24 here. If I switch this from the JSON file to the USD file or USDA file, you'll notice that goes away because the USDA file does have that information written. And that's what I'm reading to set it inside. Now there are a variety of uh, functions and different ways to bring the clip in here. I'm going to set this from clip to current action. And we're going to have the start frame be at the playhead. Then I'm going to hit import animation clip. You'll notice that the animation was loaded from this spot on the timeline and all the keys are going forward. As I scroll through, you'll see that the animation is now working correctly. Clip scale will rescale the keys so that if you have an animation that's at a higher frame rate than your current scene, it will bring those keys in. And let me just see if I can show you. So you can see here, frame 55, 56, and 57 have keys all over the place because I've actually scaled the keys in so that the frame rate matches and the, if we loaded an audio clip, it would match the lips. If I come over here and turn off apply clip scale and say import animation again, and this is just going to overwrite what's here then you'll notice that all the keys are locked to the frames. And this is going to feel a lot slower when you play it back because that was 60 frames a second and the scene is 24. Now I'm going to undo all of that. because I want to get back to a spot where I have all of my, all of my shape keys zeroed. One thing that as you're playing with this, you might want to try. If you get rid of all your animation and some of your shape keys are not zeroed, what you can do is you can very carefully start at the top and drag down. I don't see any real visible reaction here, but it will allow you to set all of them to a single value if you want. And that can be very good for really quickly, you know, going through and zeroing them all out. So the next thing I'd like to look at is loading clips. In order for us to really look at this, we have to split our screen and come into the nonlinear animation editor. right here. If we load the animation 
as a current action, it'll load actually into the shape key editor, and that's where you want to be moving things around. But in this case, we're going to load it as a clip. I'm going to move my, my playhead back, and I'm going to hit import animation clip. So this does not come up as keys on the timeline because this is a clip in the nonlinear animation editor only. And what this allows you to do is to blend multiple animations together. So if we had, for example, a longer, let's say a cinematic animation that you were working on and you wanted to merge multiple audio clips together, this is how you would do it. There is a little bit of a trick to it. So let's look at that first. Now I have already brought this clip in. And I don't have another clip. If I import this clip again, it'll overwrite the existing one uh, based on the name. So I'll just do this and I'll just do it again. If I come over here to frame 60 and do it, it'll start at a frame 60. So that, that all should make sense. But what you might want to do is have multiple clips loaded. In this case, I'm just going to duplicate this one by hitting Shift D. And I'm going to move this over to frame 60 for now. We now have two NL, NLE tracks. I can turn them off. So now only the Rain Wizard 1 is playing. And if I turn this one on, we're going to see that at the beginning there's no animation and then all of a sudden this clip takes over. So here's the trick. You want to right click select this or if you're a left click selector, we won't talk badly about you. Come over to the uh, properties over here and instead of extrapolation hold, so this clip is holding that first frame anywhere before the clip starts. We don't want that. What we want to do is go from hold to nothing. And now when we come off of this, it's actually going to flip down. So you, you see that jump there? It's jumping down. So now the bottom clip is taking over. You're able to blend these in and out with a whole bunch of settings here. You can do all sorts of of keying and what have you to make sure that these blend together and sync up. You can also change how they blend. It replaces the default, but you can add them together. You can subtract, you can multiply. There's all sorts of things you can do with the NLE editor that I, I hope you have fun exploring once you get your clips in. But in this way, you can merge as many clips as you want and they will behave as if it is one animation. So you don't have to worry about cutting together your audio for audio to face. You can have all of your clips separate and then bring them in and put them together in Blender for your final export. That's the new features for the audio to face clip import. We're still looking for more feedback. So if you have any comments or suggestions, we'd love to hear it. Thanks.